Detention, written by Steve Coy and John Ferraro. Since 2014, residents of the Northern Triangle, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, have comprised the majority of migrant encounters along America's southern border. In 2023, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol encountered 447,000 undocumented Northern Triangle migrants entering the country through Mexico. That year, the Biden administration banned asylum for anyone passing through multiple countries en route to the U.S. Interior, high school auditorium, stage, afternoon. A poorly funded small town Texas high school's auditorium. Stretching out his hand to receive a diploma from the high school principal, Josh Castillo Schroeder, 18, Mexican-American, not psyched to be here. A cap and gown cover his runner's physique. A forced smile covers his embarrassment as a PA announcer calls his name. Joshua Castillo Schroeder. Josh scans the audience for his father, Dan Schroeder, 50s, barrel-chested, discerning, who admires the photo he's just taken on his phone. Dan wears a black zip jacket over his U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement uniform and paternal pride on his face. In the back of the auditorium, a door cracks open. Slipping through is Josh's sister, Amber Castillo, 25, too cool for this shit town, sporting Dan's looks and a Columbia University hoodie. She gives Josh a guilty smile and wave. Lobby, moments later. Josh stops a few feet shy of Amber. One day you'll be on time for something. I didn't make valedictorian for punctuality. What was your GPA again? Good enough for UT. Come here. I missed you, baby bro. Amber steps up, hugging Josh like he's been on a desert island. They pull away to glance at Dan, chatting in the aisle. Ah, I shouldn't be so hard on you. That's what he's for. <laughs> you hear back from the paper? Uh, you thought I came home just for you? So you're the newest underpaid addition to the rapidly dwindling local journalism industry reporting for duty. <laughs> Good us, living the dream. <laughs> Dan approaches, cautiously distant. Made it. Amber meets him halfway with a half-hearted hug. Well, I'm proud of you, son. Um, your mom would be too. Josh turns his gaze downward, fiddling with the delicate gold chain at his neck. I'm going to go celebrate with the team. Oh, yeah, but um, be home for dinner. I'm, I'm making your favorite. See ya. Josh leaves Dan and Amber in the dust, jogging off with a group of athletic boys. You cook now? Interior dining room, early evening. Josh, Amber, and Dan sit at a four-seater table off a small kitchen that's never been remodeled. Unintelligible sound and a faint glow emanate from the TV in the next room. The kids push their forks through the worst enchiladas you've ever seen. Dan shovels them into his mouth. Well, Josh, how's the job, hunt? I have a job. Sitting in that booth 10 hours a week won't make a dent in Austin rent. I mean, thank God it's only undergrad, all those loans. No guarantee of a good paying career. You can get an education, a real world one, but... Don't think I'm army material, sir. Dan glances at the local news broadcast. Headline, Migrant Surge Overwhelms Ice Center. Christ, another caravan. You know, your mother and her family... Weren't fleeing for their lives. You know, they get caught, their kids get taken away. Speaking of which, I, I just got the okay to hire part-time. Here we go. Processing new arrivals, handing out meals, watching those kids. You pull some strings, get you to the top of the stack. It's good pay. Put you put in the door. Three, two, one. Your mother would have loved to have seen us working together. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm late for work. Well, I'm not, think about it. He slides a job application to Josh. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Josh snatches it and dashes out. Exterior. Old-timey movie theater. Sunset. Josh approaches a vintage marquee. He stares up at it. Thanks for 47 great years. 
He walks up to the ticket booth and snatches the sheet of paper taped to the window. Interior, old-timey diner, night. Josh sits across from Amber in an aqua and white vinyl booth unchanged since 1954. Slap! He slams down the paper. Dear moviegoers, economic realities force tough choices. How theatrical. What are you going to do? Josh meekly slides the ice application across the table. <laughs> what? Dad's right about the money. Oh, so you're serious about working at a concentration camp? Have you ever actually been there? Rosa Salazar, 40s, Mexican, everyone's favorite diner waitress slash honorary auntie, arrives with two cheeseburgers and milkshakes, one of which is heaped with four cherries. Hola, cariños. Long time. Back for good? Back for now. Rosa sets down the cherry-laden shake in front of Josh. Remember when he used to steal all your guys' cherries? <laughs> Eventually, your mom pulled me aside and said, Rosa, we're tired of this. Just give him four stinking cherries. <laughs> Oh, era una buena amiga. Congratulations on your big day. She shows him a picture on her phone, the one Dan snapped of Josh at graduation. Josh is surprised and embarrassed. Rosa spots two new customers and makes her exit. Be right there. I think you're overreacting, sis. You're overreacting. You sound just like him. Maybe you should work there. Josh looks around the room to see if anyone's listening. I just, I don't want to leave for college without... Without what? I just have some things I need to tell him. In the journalism biz, we call that going on the record. It's a way of coming out and confirming things that, like, everyone already suspects. Hey, have you seen my... Cool, empathetic, big sister who always has my back. She was last seen skipping town like eight years ago. Well, instead of holding up the carceral state together, you could work out your issues over dinner. You first. Interior living room night. Josh encounters Dan sitting on the couch watching a court show. His uniform draped over the sofa. A couple of beer cans decorate the coffee table. Hey, there's an envelope on your desk. From UT. Little or big? I don't know. Medium? Interior Josh's bedroom moments later. Josh enters his Spartan bedroom. Still unpacked cardboard boxes are stacked in a corner. As he reaches for an envelope on his desk, emblazoned with the University of Texas logo, a distraction. A framed photo of a 10-year-old Josh and Emilia Castillo, 30s, Mexican, maxed out, joie de vivre, in a playful embrace. She wears a gold chain, the one Josh rubs for luck before he eagerly tears open the envelope. Josh smiles and reads from the topmost sheet. Dear Mr. Castillo Schroeder, Congratulations again on your acceptance to the University of Texas at Austin. Blah, blah, blah. Interior Dan's Bronco Day. A 1990s Ford Bronco zooms down Interstate 69 amidst palm trees, car dealerships, and not much else. Son, we'll fix this. How did you not know? The in-state tuition was the only silver lining of mom dying. Look, you can defer it. Make some money, go next fall. So I just pretend to enjoy two whole seasons of baseball with you? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean it. Yeah, you did. It's okay, I never thought we'd make up for the last eight years over a summer, but, but maybe over a year... Dan hesitantly reaches for Josh's shoulder, then retreats, puts his hand back on the steering wheel. But the center pays $18 an hour. It's flexible, too. They don't come in 9 to 5.
mean, I'm already in prison. Exterior, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Processing Center, ICE Center, McAllen, Texas, day. Dan and Josh approach a massive campus of perfectly rectangular prefab buildings surrounded by concrete, asphalt, and dead grass. Interior, ICE Center, hallway, moments later. Josh trails Dan, who moves at a quick clip, glaring fluorescent lights, bounce off the gold chain around his neck. Come on, keep up. Duck that chain in. Josh does as he's told. They enter the expansive main floor, concrete, exposed rafters, chain-link fence holding cells. Chatter over the walkie at Dan's waist. Eddie will give you a tour in a bit. Okay? Josh takes in the sights. Boys of all ages, some toddlers, stuffed in holding cells. They sit on the concrete floor, resigned, sick, hungry. Foil blankets strewn everywhere. All right, uh, first, you'll need to fill out your paperwork. It's a mile tall, so you can use my office. Hey, Earth to Josh. Interior, Dan's office day. Walls lined with filing cabinets. Binders, papers, folders stacked everywhere. Through a small window behind Dan's desk, sliver of natural light pierces the grim ambiance. Josh sits in front of Dan's desk, head turned over his shoulder in horrified fascination at the main floor. Dan struggles in vain to open the window. God damn it! Hey, AC guys, better show. Dan motions to a large stack of paperwork, tosses Josh a pen. So are you waiting for something? Josh leafs through the overwhelming stack of bureaucracy. But even the warden's kid ain't immune to the federal government. And don't worry, your psyche valve came back just fine. Josh forces a smile and fills out the first sheet, then snaps his head back up, like he's seen a ghost. Or a bobblehead doll. It's former Texas Rangers third baseman Adrian Beltre, commemorating his 3,000th hit. Adrian towers over a phone book-sized replica of the Rangers stadium. Dan taps Adrian's grinning head. Boing! Glad you're here. I can't believe you still have that thing. It's one of the best nights of my life. You want it back, you let me know. It belongs here. A knock at the door. In comes Eddie through heel. Thirties, muscular tattooed arms. Too upbeat for this place. Eddie! Hey, what's up, boss? Josh, my man. Been a while, huh? It's good to see you. Excited to get started? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Eddie's the best in the business. It don't ruin him on his first day, right? Hmm. Interior, surveillance room, continuous. A wall full of monitors in front of a console. Eric, 24, would be wearing Sperry topsiders if they were ICE approved, sits at the console monitoring camera feeds. We got 40 cameras inside, 20 outside. They'll let you see just about every nook and cranny. Uh, Eric, Josh, Josh, Eric. Don't get too attached. Eric's leaving us for UT Law soon. Someone's got to help make Austin normal again. Cool, that's a, a T14, right? Where'd you learn the lingo? Uh, my mom, is. Um, she was a uh, immigration paralegal. Lots more to see, Josh. Exterior, ice center parking lot, afternoon, blinding sunshine. Heat radiates from the blacktop as two buses pull into the parking lot. A flood of dusty, sweaty, and tired young men and boys stream out of the buses. All Latino, all in street clothes. A couple of the older ones carry toddlers. Dan, wearing sunglasses, oversees the influx of new arrivals. At a small table, Eddie looks over a clipboard. Josh pats down the new arrivals, wiping the sweat beating from his forehead. Next in line is Gabriel Marroquin, 17, holding it together like a champ. Name? Gabriel Romeo Marroquin Garcia. Country of origin? Guatemala. Are you uh, here alone? 
Gabriel turns his head over his shoulder. Out from behind him steps his little brother Felix, eight, teary-eyed, but putting on a brave face. Felix, it's okay. Don't follow your brother. Felix clings to Gabriel as they step into Josh's queue. Josh looks up from the last boy he searched, freezing as his eyes meet Gabriel's. He holds his gloved hands as if waiting for Gabriel's consent. Gabriel nods and holds his arms out to the side. Josh apprehensively starts the pat down under Gabriel's armpits and works cautiously toward his abdomen. Josh feels Gabriel's glare and pulls away for a second, then hurriedly continues from his groin to his ankles. Gabriel steps to the side and nudges Felix forward. Felix wipes his eyes with balled up fists. Josh gives the little boy a rushed, cursory pat down. He's checking to see if we have anything dangerous in our pockets. We don't have anything in our pockets. Gabriel glares at Josh and ushers Felix away. Dan walks up and claps Josh on the shoulders. Hey, uh, after we're all done here, how about a cheeseburger on me? Hmm? Josh looks over his shoulder, nods, moves on to the next migrant stepping forward for a pat down. Interior, diner, night. Josh and Dan sit across from one another in a booth. Dan nurses a cup of coffee. Josh stirs a Coke with a straw. The door jingles as two women walk hand in hand into the diner. Josh observes Dan craning his neck, gawking at them. Wow. There have always been so many of them. Huh? At the facility. Oh, it didn't used to be this bad. Uh, we're making the best of a difficult situation. Look, it, it puts food on our table and clothes on your back, and it paid child support. Just, just give it a chance. There were so many kids. Blame their parents. They look terrified. They are. Interior, ice center day. Shouts and commotion as guards force Gabriel Felix into a single-file line of dead-eyed detainees. Among them is Luis Zapatero, 21, a Salvadorian troublemaker. Oye, Luis, what's this about? Tu día de suerte. Shower time. Hey, guard, my friend here can go in front of me. It smells like shit. Where'd you learn English? <laughs> Shit, there's more white people at home than Salvadorans. Fucking Bitcoin. Behind them in line, a sickly boy, Miguel, 16. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, cover your mouth. Perdón. Es que... No me quiere dar medicina. Soy Miguel. Hi, Miguel. I'm Felix. Felix extends his hand to Miguel. Gabriel gently swats it away to prevent the handshake. Hey, don there it is. Honduras. Pero un gran inundación que me quitó la casa y mi mamá y mi hermana se... 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 Guatemala. The cartel. Our mother's still out there. How long have you been here? Semanas, creo yo. You've been eating this food for two weeks? No wonder you're dying. Shut up, dummy. Just two days for us. Yeah, Yeah, last time I had to wait nine days. The boys remove their clothes and enter the showers. Gabriel mashes a soap dispenser cautiously, then aggressively. Nothing comes out. What the hell? The noise attracts guard Jeff Gasparich, 30s, meathead, who saunters over and eyes Gabriel like a side of beef. It hey, cool it, amigo. That's a very delicate piece of machinery. Hey, Schroeder. Josh diverts his gaze from Gabriel's as he enters the stall. Why don't you grab this fine young specimen some more soap? He's filthy. Josh nods and leaves. Hey, Gabriel. Your boyfriend might be of some use. What do you mean? 
I'm not looking for trouble. I have to look after Felix. Well, you may not be looking after him much longer. Huh? Josh returns with a bottle of soap. Gasparich motions for him to enter the stall and refill it. The water's still running. Go ahead. Gabriel flattens himself against the half wall as Josh struggles to refill the soap without getting soaked. As Josh exits, the water shuts off. Oh, would you look at that. Better luck next week, boys. The boys reach for their towels and file out as water drips off Josh to the floor. Interior, Amber's living room that night. Josh is in a fugue state, taking in Amber's soulless studio. Lots of gray, cheap stainless steel appliances, glass tile. So my editor called a meeting and within an hour we had a coverage team in place. I may get to do some real reporting. God, you wouldn't believe the number of people who call in with total nonsense. Like, okay, Boomer, I went to Columbia Journalism to blow the lid off the pothole situation on McMansion Lane. Anyway, how's life at Joshwitz? Huh? Oh, does that offend you? Uh, you're the one who works there. No, not you. It's, um, it's the water. Explícame. There's no hot water. There's no soap. They get two minutes once a week. It's like prison. I can't believe families put their kids through this. That's your epiphany? It's selfish. You should go on the record about it. What? Fun. I'll break the story. We'll bring that whole place down. What story? I'm nobody. I only got the job because of dad. That's exactly why it's a story. I'm gonna go. Think about it. So when, when? For who? Interior. Ice center main floor. Afternoon. A grimy industrial ceiling fan spins above the cage, housing Gabriel, Felix, sleeping, Luis, Miguel, and other migrants. Two guards roust a young boy, eleven, awake, and lead him out of the cell, waking Gabriel. Oye, Luis, where's he going? Donde sea. What? Foster care, donde sea. Little kids don't stay here for more than a couple weeks. No, 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 they, they can't do that. You believe that you haven't been paying attention, man. Gabriel's outburst wakes Felix, sleeping nearby. Sorry, buddy. Felix pulls his blanket back over his head. Gabriel goes from sorry to worried, rubs Felix's back, coaxing him to wake up. Felix? You, you okay? Gabriel runs his hand across Felix's forehead. Shit. He's burning up. Luis motions to Miguel, looking like death in the corner. También. Through the cage, they see Josh leaning against the wall of Dan's office, ready to go home. Hey, I got an idea. Oye, gringo! Ven aquí! Uh, my friend has something to ask you. Josh approaches the cage as Luis pushes Gabriel to the edge of the cell. Josh and Gabriel come face to face, unable to speak nor turn away. Josh is about to speak when... My brother is sick. He needs a doctor, some medicine, and Miguel too. Can I help you? At the point where you are. He has a fever. He's burning up. I'm sorry my shift is over. Mi día ha terminado. Estoy acabado. He's only eight, man. Lo siento, mañana, I'm sorry. Uh, yo, I thought this was a first world country. You can't even get some cold medicine? Man, back home we get all the drugs we want. You want some? I can get you some. Dan steps in to drag his son away from the cacophony. Let the vets handle this stuff. Yeah, the vets weren't handling it. You step out of your station, it could be a big problem for a lot of people. Don't go answering every kid that cries for some Tylenol. Interior, Josh's bathroom, night. Josh at the sink, a towel around his waist, a toothbrush in his hand. He puts toothpaste back in the medicine cabinet and eyes a row of medicine, Tylenol, Advil, Dad's antibiotics. He closes the medicine cabinet door in a huff. 
Interior, dining room morning. Dan sips coffee at the dining room table while reading the Rio Grande Guardian newspaper. Headline, ice raids in McAllen, 17 arrested, families torn apart. Josh enters as Dan throws the paper on the table in disgust. Fucking reporters. We're just doing our jobs. Went out. Josh picks up the paper. Holy shit, Amber. Josh hands his dad the paper, pointing out the byline by Marina Alvarez, John Eames, Amber Castillo. She dropped my last name. Unbelievable. Josh scans the article with increasing anxiety. Raids took place on, on Gardenia Ave. Shit. Rosa. Is she undocumented? What happens to her kids? Dan scrapes his plate into the trash, chucks it in the sink. All right, let's go. I'm just going to use the bathroom first. All right. Dan heads for the door, Josh in the opposite direction. Interior, Dan's car, day. Blinding Texas summer sun. Josh stares aimlessly into the passenger side mirror as Dan looks straight ahead, listening to the radio. The United Nations estimates more than 6,000 people are making their way through Central America to the Hidalgo port of entry. Dan changes the station to some old-fashioned country. So when I get in, I'll put in a request for that kid to see a doc, right? May not happen right away, but... Oh, and I heard from Port Isabel. Rose is there, and her kids are with her sister. Going to do anything about that one? We'll have to wait for the legal process to play out. It could take weeks. Months. How could you not have known? Look, your mom was helping with her application on the side until she got sick. Firm didn't pick up her case, so she just, just let it ride. You should have fixed this. I can't force people to act right. She made choices. We all do. Josh returns his angry gaze to the side mirror. Interior, ice center, main floor, day. Josh clutches his backpack nervously as he and Dan enter the facility. They're intercepted by an ice administrator. Sir, we've prepared a statement for you. I'll brief you in your office. We'll need a statement from your son, too. They dodge a coroner, wheeling a black body bag on a gurney. Migrants yell and punch the fences along the funeral procession. Dan's office. Josh stares daggers at his father. Josh, that kid. His name was Miguel. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure you aren't found culpable in any way. What? They checked on him twice last night. Protocol was followed. Protocol? Look, I can't grind this place to a halt for every kid who swallows river water and gets the runs. He died, Daddy. Fucking died. A faint rattle from within Josh's backpack. Dan eyes his son, then the backpack. Dad. Dan snatches the backpack. Josh watches anxiously as Dan rifles through it, finding his prescription bottle inside. What did you think you were going to do with this? I don't know. Maybe... You don't know. Maybe because you're not a fucking doctor. You know, maybe you had a virus. In which case, all you've done is smuggle contraband into a federal facility. Oh, Christ, what now? Social workers are here. Stay right there. Josh does as he's told. Until the door shuts, he eyes a stack of folders sitting on the corner of Dan's desk. Interior, ice center, main floor, moments later. Dan and Eddie join a larger group of social workers, all holding folders. One holds a few stuffed animals. Flanking them, a large phalanx of guards, including Gasparich. In the cage, Gabriel pulls Felix by the waist as he fights his way through the crowd toward Luis. I'm taking the little ones. I don't want to go. Felix embraces his brother with an airtight grip. I won't let them take you. Luis leaves the brothers for the commotion near the opening of the cage. A toddler with a soaked diaper sits alone in the corner on a foil blanket, wailing. Other kids sit against the fence expressing the same pain, less audibly. Josh steps into the threshold of Dan's office to watch as Luis joins a group of older teens at the cage's opening. They form a human chain between the guards and the younger kids who might be in danger of being taken. 
stand down. No, no, no. We're not moving. Back the fuck up. Gasparich reaches for the baton on his waist. Fuck you. The other kids find more courage, shouting obscenities at the guards. Luis and Gasparich stand face to face. You're feeling brave, Pendejo. Gasparich puts some oomph and some spit into that last word. Luis shoves him in response, <laughs> starting a melee. <laughs> guards whip the other teens with batons. Some go down instantly. Others fight back against repeated shots. Gabriel pulls Felix into a tight hug to shield his eyes as the chaos unfolds across the cage. Luis remains standing, bloodied and bruised. Gasparich continues his assault on Luis before an arm grabs him from behind. Ah. It's Dan. That's enough! Dan throws Gasparich off Luis, then pins Luis to the ground. Gasparich looks on, panting, dying to jump back in the fray. Gabriel dashes over, pleads with Dan, screams in his face. You're gonna kill him! Dan whips around, elbowing Gabriel violently to the ground. He cues more guards to enter. They part the crowd, subdue the remaining resistance, zip-tie Luis, lead Gasparich away. Social workers carry several of the smaller children, including the wailing toddler. Gabriel, still on the ground, bleeding from a busted lip, grips Felix's hand for dear life. A social worker approaches the brothers with a clipboard, then veers away and scoops up a lone five-year-old boy. Hey, everybody move! The guards bulldoze the remaining older kids out of the way for the social workers to schlep almost all of the young ones out like sacks of grain. Eddie enters, whispers to Dan, and points at several of the rebels. Dan directs the guards to escort the older boys away. Gabriel and Felix run to Luis, kneeling bloodied in the center of the cage, his eye swollen shut. Gabriel removes his shirt and wraps it around Luis's head. Damn fool. Eddie steps in impatiently and pulls Luis to his feet. Mejor morir de pie que vivir arrodillado, ah? The remaining prisoners <laughs> cheer as Eddie leads Luis away past a glowering Gasparich, then past Josh. Dan surveys the scene. Gabriel glares at him, then at Josh, a three-way standoff. Gabriel spits blood on the floor. Interior, eye center, employee bathroom, day. Josh splashes his face with water and stares into the mirror, vibrating with impotent rage. First riot, huh? Eric walks to the next sink and washes his hands. Josh stares at the rivulets of red-tinted water circling the drain. Hey, my blood. Okay? I was upstairs, watching. Just like you. Till the end. I'm not here to crack any skulls. Why are you here? <laughs> Look. White, brown, left, right, north, south. Everybody knows that it's fucked. Those idiots in Austin and D.C., they want to argue the particulars. But if you ask me, none of my kind's really fixing to pick their own strawberries. My kind applies to law school. A federal job, a letter of rec from one of them idiots, uh, that's a difference maker. Not that I got any interest in practicing anyway. But, um... The real point of coming here for everybody is to leave. Interior, ice center, main floor, evening, silence. Many of the younger kids are asleep. Felix rests his head on Gabriel's lap. They're covered in a foil blanket. Felix opens his eyes. Oye, Gabriel, that guy's watching his sleep. Can you get him to give him some more snacks? Gabriel smiles, gently repositions Felix's head, and walks to Josh. Quit staring, you're freaking out my little brother. How are you? How's Luis? 
banged up, but okay. Didn't give you a new shirt. Ay, mierda. Gabriel wraps the blanket around himself. Josh removes his work shirt, then takes off his undershirt and passes it through the fence. His fingertips touch Gabriel's as they make the exchange. The separations, they're going to happen again, yeah? When I'm here, I looked at your file in my boss's office. Three days till the next separation. I don't have a plan yet, but... I thought your plan was to take over the family's business. You go, do I was going to go to college, discover myself, all that shit, and system got in the way. And now I'm here. Long live the system. Interior, Dan's office, evening. On the computer monitor atop Dan's desk, Gasparich's name, and photo under the heading Disciplinary Action. Dan tidies the items on his desk, turning to an open folder to his right. Inside, a form with Rosa's name and photo. He reaches for the bobblehead, turns it around, taps its head, sighs as it nods hypnotically. Back to his file folders, something's not right. On his computer, Dan opens security camera footage. He rewinds the feeds a few minutes. In one split-screen feed, Josh exits Dan's office. In another split-screen, Josh hands his shirt to Gabriel. Josh enters. I'm all down on the main floor. Dan gets up, his face not betraying what he's seen. Interior, Dan's house, dining room, night. Dan and Josh, still in uniforms, eat boxed mac and cheese. Well, so it's a spot. Hope so. It's the only thing I know how to make. Your mother taught us nothing. Hey, can we talk? So on your mind. I thought we'd have more time to get to know each other at the facility, but it's just so yeah. complicated. Yeah. I think it's pretty simple. I mean, you know, there are rules, protocols, everything has its place. May not be the nicest place, but uh Josh rubs his gold chain. Now that you did pick that up from your mother. She had to sell everything else. She used to rub it too. She was keeping a secret. Uh, for future reference, Marroquin comes after Marquez. And you'll find these uniforms get scratchy without an undershirt. I'm suspending Gasparich, you know. He'll appeal, there'll be an investigation, bullshit, bullshit. But these things take time. I got seven fucking years at that place. You haven't even been there seven weeks. I'm done standing by while your officers beat the shit out of kids. I'll grow up! None of the things you think you're doing are going to help anybody. What's so special about that boy anyway? Hey, we're going to talk about this now! Josh slams his bedroom door. Interior, Dan's house. Hallway, dining room, dawn, present. Josh enters from his room wearing sneakers and a t-shirt printed with McAllen High track and field. He sneaks through the kitchen. No sign of Dan. Outside, Dan's Bronco isn't in the driveway. Josh exits the front door, pulls out his phone, taps his message thread with Amber, types a message, and jogs off. Exterior, Carlson Lake, Hidalgo, Texas. Morning. Josh and Amber sit on the hood of her car overlooking a reed-filled reservoir fed by the Rio Grande. Holy shit, you snuck in drugs? Did you trade them for a cell phone? She scribbles the detail down in her notebook. What else do you need to get off your chest, my little ice mole? Oh, hold on. I'm not going on the record or whatever. I need names, including yours. I'm glad you're developing a conscience, pero que dijo mamá? Si no hablas? Pierre de la voz. You serious? What else do you want to tell me? Mm, no. Not tell. Interior, ice center, hallway, moments later. Josh, in uniform, walks in like he owns the place. 
Eddie greets him. Thought you were off today. Where's the big man? I yeah, said he was checking on a transfer from another facility. Back him in while he still can. Josh struts past the main cages, approaching Felix, who sits alone, wrapped in his foil blanket, eyes welling with tears. You okay, buddy? It took Gabriel. Who took him? Gasparich whispers over Josh's shoulder. The penalty for contraband clothing is a stay in isolation. Gasparich struts off. Josh pulls a piece of chocolate from his pocket and passes it through the fence to Felix. Felix sniffles, takes the candy, and nods in thanks. It'll be okay. Josh stands and heads down the corridor. Interior, ice center, isolation corridor, day. Josh kneels in front of a cell and opens a rectangular slot toward the bottom of it. Gabrielle appears through the slot. He wears a raggedy uniform shirt. That prick took your shirt. That one looks good on you. Doesn't look good on anybody. How's Felix? I don't know. Does he like chocolate? I can't lose him. You won't. We have three days to get you out. And my mom? I talked to my dad, but we aren't exactly on speaking terms right now. Are you usually on speaking terms with him? Look, I'm not saying I like the guy. I wonder why not. But you should give him a chance. My dad. My dad was a hard ass too. He died when I was 10, but I think he knew about me before I did. Gabriel offers his hand to Josh through the slot. Josh hesitantly takes it. You never know how long you're going to have with somebody. You have room in each other's hearts. You just have to find it. Interior, Port Isabel Detention Center, moments later. Dan enters a large room with a shiny concrete floor. Bunk beds line the walls. Round tables and a few tattered sofas crowd the middle of the room. Dozens of female detainees in navy blue jumpsuits socialize. One of them is Rosa. She's stricken. She knows she messed up. Get a hearing date yet? Nobody's told me anything. My sister's trying to get me a lawyer. That's good. Look, I, I know the warden here. I'll, I'll make sure they don't move you. You can make an asylum claim. What was that son of a bitch's name? Raphael. Look, I know a guy who can get your green card, a real one. If all that doesn't work out, you set up in Reynosa and the kids visit and you try again. Oh, Rosa. You had a good run. Yeah. I'm one of the lucky ones. I'll tell your family you're okay. Dan releases her hand, but Rosa grips him tight again. Dan, say hi to your family. Dan contemplates that before continuing out the door. Interior, ice center isolation corridor, day. Josh kneels in front of Gabriel's cell. When are you going to make your move? As soon as I get a window. It's all starting to make sense now. Josh startles, pulls his hand from Gabriel's. They lock eyes. Eric strolls down the hall, coffee mug in hand. Bro, you're good. Consenting adults. Josh relaxes. Then so does Gabriel. Eric pulls up and kneels in front of Gabriel's cell, talking to him through the slot. I mean, you can't really consent. <laughs> Your secret's safe with me. As long as you don't tell the old man about all my uh, extra coffee breaks. Eric tips his mug at Josh, claps him on the shoulders, and exits down the hall. Josh turns to Gabriel. Here's my window. 
Interior, Ice Center Surveillance Room, Day. On monitors, Josh appears walking through a hallway. He jumps to a different monitor, then another one. Finally, Josh stops in front of a door, hesitates as he reaches for the handle, opens it, and steps inside the surveillance room. He walks to the video monitors, eyes them anxiously, landing on a view of the main floor cage where the riot happened. He turns to a computer and inserts a USB drive, rewinding the riot footage. On monitor, freeze frame of the start of the riot. Josh clicks around, triumphantly smashes play. On the computer screen, the user interface shows a video export. On monitor, grainy, black and white footage of the riot. Interior, Amber's living room, late morning. Josh flips through the channels on a wall-mounted flat-screen TV. No mention of the leaked footage on the local news. Josh gets up, paces the room, hovering over Amber, who sits on the couch, pecking away at her laptop. You said the tape would blow the roof off that place. Nobody even noticed. Nobody gives a shit. I got 43 retweets. Look. The progress doesn't move in a straight line. I'll DM my friend at the Chronicle. We can dig deeper. We can get more footage. We're suddenly in this together now that it suits you. Why'd you come back here anyway? To make a difference? Yeah. Our savior. You get to be whatever you want, whenever you want. Fucking off to New York, slumming it in McAllen, dropping everything that poses the slightest inconvenience. Senorita Castillo. I hope this place came with friendly lease terms for when you bounce again. Amber cools her boiling blood, sets her laptop to her side. I wanted to move my bed. What? I'd wake up in the middle of the night, my headboard rattling from his fists going through the wall. I wanted to move my bed to the other side of the room to get some sleep, but I thought, no, I need to stay awake in case he ever takes it out on her. Then me and mom realized we all needed to get our own beds. I don't remember it like that. Because mom and I protected you. But I guess we failed because here you are trying to be everything you're not, craving the approval of a man who would hate the real you if you ever met him. You don't know the real me either. He furiously heaves Amber's laptop into the wall. Drywall dust and pieces of the keyboard scatter everywhere. She stands proudly, masking her fear with condescension. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. No. No, it doesn't. Josh stalks out, leaving Amber to survey the damage. Exterior sidewalk, day. Josh trudges along, head bowed, hands in pockets. As he approaches Dan's house, he doesn't notice the red and blue flashing lights emanating from the approaching car. <coughs> the car blasts its siren. Josh turns around. You kidding me, Amber? The car's window rolls down. Eddie, in an ice vehicle. The hell? That's cool, right? I get to blow through the stop signs with this thing. Thought I'd act like a cop, seeing as you committed a felony. Interior, Dan's office, afternoon. Thwack. Dan drops the stack of papers Josh signed on his first day on the job. Page 37. Go ahead. A lot of numbers in there, so I'll skip to the exciting one. 28. That's how old you'll be when you get out of federal prison for violating your NDA. But hey, I'll lose my job. That'll fix it. Next guy coming in, he'll let all these people go. Give everybody a free pass. Say something! Dan seethes, shudders, exhales through his teeth, looks out the window and notices he's made a scene. He gets up and walks calmly around the room, closing the blinds. You know, I pulled your little friend out of ISO, but you seem addicted to sabotaging the one person who's trying to help you. Yeah, like you helped Miguel? What happened to that boy was unfortunate. But if I get involved with all of them, I can't manage any of them. This place, this system, it's... You think I'd want to watch kids beg for food or, or, or blankets? Or the parents they may never see again? Yeah. I think you do. 
I think you're that desperate to control something in a world that has no use for you. I do it to provide for you! But you wouldn't know from responsibility. You never had to take care of anybody. Do you know what happens during chemo and radiation? Your taste buds die. Your body stops making new cells. So they die. Mom couldn't even taste her own cooking. Eventually, she couldn't swallow, anyway. At the end, it was chicken broth and hot sauce. Me and Amber watched her die while you were here, providing. Josh, she didn't want me there. We needed you there. Dan rubs his temples, looks around to anywhere but his son. At the Adrian Beltre bobblehead, now gently swaying from the thud of Josh's fists. At his computer monitor. God damn it. Don't move. Dan fixes Josh to his seat with a look and storms out. Leaves his walkie near the edge of the desk. Josh blows off steam by sliding his chair over to the window, peeks under the blinds at Gabriel and Felix. He aimlessly slides back, then back to the window, back and forth, anxious, angry. Josh pushes off the window with too much speed and bumps into Dan's desk, sending Dan's walkie falling to the ground. Scrambles around to the other side of the desk, and as he reaches for the walkie in the corner of his eye, sees that the security camera feeds on Dan's monitor are glitching out. Shit. Interior, eye center surveillance room, continuous. Eric glides back from his desk to avoid the coffee spilling all over him. The console wasn't so lucky. It's soaked. Shit. Shit, 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 ah. Uh. He dashes out of the room, right into Dan walking in. Interior, eye center main floor moments later. Josh walks up to the cage, wild eyes darting around the room, only a handful of guards. Gabriel stands up to meet him. What happened with your old man? Hit me, in the stomach. You're crazy, I'm not gonna- Wham! Luis reaches through the bars, grabs Josh by the lapels and slams his face into the bars. <clears throat> Like that, pendejo. Boy from smart guy, Gabriel. The other boys in the cage ready themselves for round two. The commotion draws Eddie and Gasparich to the scene. Eddie tends to Josh. Gasparich opens the cage, ready to crack heads. Inside the cage, Luis and the group of older boys are ready to rumble. Gasparich bull rushes them, flailing his baton wildly. Gabriel and Felix scurry to the edge of the cage. Just outside the cage, Eddie helps Josh, who brushes him off. I can handle myself. Josh runs in the cage and tackles Gabriel as Eddie looks on in horror. Oh, shit. Uh, boss, we got a situation. Josh wrestles with Gabriel, rolling over so Gabriel's on top as the other older boys pummel Gasparich. Get off. Get off. Interior surveillance room, moments later. Dan and Eric look at the video board full of glitching black monitors. Eddie calls out over Eric's walkie. All personnel to the main floor. Dan and Eric look at each other. Oh shit. Interior, Dan's office hallway, moments later. Josh flips the deadbolt to the door to prop it open. He calmly walks toward the main floor, untucks his mom's chain from his undershirt. Interior, ice center, main floor. Josh shoves Gabriel off, cracks a bloody smile at Gasparich being overwhelmed. Josh looks over his shoulder, squares himself up between Gabriel and Eddie, now in the cage, and attempting to pull the other boys off Gasparich without hurting them. Near soul. Get 
Gabriel catches on and runs at Josh, slamming him into Eddie, then the cage. Josh and Gabriel put on a WWE-style show, throwing each other against the cage over and over until crash. The cage wall collapses. Gabriel lands on top of Josh. Thud. The back of Josh's head hits the concrete floor. Migrants pour out of the holding cell and swarm the guards. Dazed and bloody, Josh smiles grimly, motions to Felix, then over to Dan's office. Gabriel grabs Felix and helps Josh up. The three scramble to... Interior, Dan's office hallway. Moments later, Josh, Gabriel, and Felix enter. Josh slams the door shut and locks it. Watch out for the guards. Felix peers through the blinds. Josh and Gabrielle push Dan's desk to the wall below the window, sweep the desk with their arms to clear it. Josh leaps atop the desk, tries and fails to force open the stuck window, looks around the room in a panic. Give me something to break it. As Josh and Gabrielle scan the room, Felix parts the window blinds and eagerly watches Gasparich get pummeled, yelling into the radio on his shoulder. I need backup! Titan has fallen! Gabrielle whips his head over to the source of the cry. The walkie on the floor. I repeat, Titan has fallen. Oh, oh. Gabrielle snatches it off the floor and tosses it to Josh. Boom! Josh slams the walkie into the glass. The walkie <laughs> breaks apart. The glass does not. Gabrielle and Josh scan the room for a second option. Then it appears to them in Felix's outstretched hands. The bobblehead. Josh snatches it from Felix and smashes the doll's heavy resin base <laughs> into the window over and over <laughs> until it cracks. He drops the doll on Dan's desk below. He takes off his button-up shirt, wraps it around his hand, clears the broken glass away, shakes off the glass and throws the shirt to Gabriel, who puts it on. Come on, now. Josh jumps down and frantically empties his pockets of cash, pressing it into Gabriel's hands, then motions to Felix. Come on, little man. Felix runs to Josh. Bear hugs him around the waist. Is he coming with us? Gabrielle turns to Josh for an answer. Josh rips the gold chain from his neck and puts it inside the left chest pocket of Gabrielle's shirt, pressing his hand to Gabrielle's heart. Go find your mom. Gabrielle reluctantly hoists himself atop the desk. Josh lifts Felix up to Gabrielle, who carefully guides him through the window, holding on to both his hands, dangling him outside. No, no, no! Wait! Time's running out. There's his window. One last shot. Corazo. Gabriel lets go of Felix, who lands on the ground below in a heap, but unharmed. Gabriel turns back to Josh for one last look before he climbs through and drops out of sight. Josh turns to the door, stares at it, drags himself to the threshold, Rests his forehead again a moment. Deep breath. He throws the door open, stumbling through the threshold, shuffling a few steps forward to the main floor. Josh watches Eric dash to the melee and join Eddie in pulling the migrants off Gasparich. A handful of guards rush the main floor, firing tear gas and zip-tying the migrants' hands together. Josh is on the verge of fainting, vision blurring. In the distance, he makes out a figure sprinting toward him. Dan. As Josh collapses, Dan wraps him in a bear hug. Dan cradles a spent, bleeding, concussed Josh in his arms. Through Dan's open office door, chaos. Smashed walkie, smashed bobblehead, smashed window from walkie. All clear. Detainees are contained. Multiple injuries on the scene. We're going to need an ambulance. The broken window. Open to the Texas night sky. Interior, hospital day. Morning's first light hits Josh, asleep in a hospital bed, head wrapped in gauze. His eyes flutter open. Coming to, squinting at the light, he narrows his focus to something nearby. You're here early. You look worse in my living room. Josh tries and fails to suppress a laugh, Wincing from the pain, Amber joins, running her thumb over his wounds. Sorry. Hope you saved your prison paychecks. I need a new laptop anyway. 
I can't believe you did that. Any of it. Who are you, bro? She smiles archly, but proudly. He does too. His self-amazement overcoming his self-deprecation. Click. The door to the room opens. Josh, you up? That's my cue. I'm slumming it here for a while. I'll see you around. Amber makes for the exit as Dan enters holding a big greasy paper bag. He averts his eyes and tries to slink past, but she brushes his shoulder with her hand, halting his progress. They exchange a polite but solemn look before Amber leaves. Dan approaches Josh's bed. Should you be at work? No, I'm, uh, I'm off today. So are you. Um, that head wound and the concussion means 24-hour stay. How are the others? Lady's a little shaken up. You know what I mean. Dad? Gabriel and Felix? No, I'm unaware of any current detainees by those names. Dan catches Josh, smiling subtly. So what happens now? Eh. The administration wants to bury all this, and that means no inquiry into any of the anarchists who may have contributed to the events of the last week. But, uh, but I do have some bad news. Um, your position with the Bureau of Immigration and Customs Enforcement has been eliminated. What about your position? It's being backfilled. I'll be all right. Wish I could say the same for Adrian here. <laughs> Dan reaches into the paper bag, producing the smashed bobblehead. It's paint scuffed, head dangling off a stretched out spring, sets it down on a table next to Josh. Technically, it wasn't even yours to begin with. Dad, I need to tell you something. Josh tenses, deep breath. Dan stops him. Hand to Josh's shoulder. Son, I know what kind of man you are. Josh exhales in relief, eyes welling, places his hand atop Dan's. Their eyes meet. They both manage to just barely keep it together. Dan sees Josh's necklace is missing. Yeah. Josh, um... Your mother I did everything right, I know. No, not, not everything. But most things. One thing, she couldn't have done any better. You hungry? Dan walks back to the table, takes out two styrofoam containers from the bag, and hands one to Josh. He sits and flips on the TV. Local news. The latest incident is sure to amplify calls for reform. Despite bipartisan congressional enthusiasm, many children remain separated from their families. It's, it's just an unfortunate story, Michelle. Indeed, Jim. Well, folks, summer is heating up. Coming up after the break, we've got tips for surviving those triple-digit temps without breaking a sweat. Exterior, dirt road, night. Gravel crunches under the weight of an oncoming car. Headlights appear behind Gabriel and Felix, who turn and squint at the light. Josh's chain glimmers from around Gabriel's neck. The boys look hopeful, then scared. They shield their eyes from the car's blinding headlights as the dust kicked up from the car swirls into view. Cut to black. 